Hey, Jim. Pleasure to meet you too. I'm good, thank you. Good. Fresh off a flight from Hong Kong, but I'm feeling good. Okay, you look great for a flight from Hong Kong. Oh, that's very kind. This is City Social, which is your fifth restaurant? That's right, our fifth restaurant. You now have how many? 16. 16. I think. In... I think. You think? <laughs> Not sure, I can't count. So I many. might have opened one on the lift of the way up, I don't know. <laughs> 16 worldwide. Yeah. How long did it take you to open all these since, since your first? Well, you know, everyone calls it an overnight success story, but I call it a 30-year overnight success story. Okay. I started in the industry um, at a very young age, mm -hmm. um, from the age of 16. In our world, the success really happens in the latter part of your career. It's sure. very difficult to make it that big so young. It's quite a lengthy process, but it has only taken me six years from Holland Street to where we are today. What are we going to be eating today? So, Jim, we have three dishes. Mm -hmm. So the first one we're going to eat is the quail breakfast. Interesting. Oh, wow. So we came up with quail porridge, which right. sits in the bottom of the bowl. Okay. Uh, the roasted quail sits on top. I wasn't sure about bird and porridge. It didn't <laughs> seem to make sense to me, but it's really good. When you go out for dinner to a restaurant, what's sort of like a little bit more groundbreaking, mm. it should be a little bit of an adventure without being too over the top. Yeah. But that's what we try and do at a lot of our restaurants is to give you a little journey without having you think about it too much and things maybe you wouldn't try at home. You know? Sure. When did you start to feel successful? I still don't feel successful today. I mean, okay. I mean, You've got 16 restaurants, just FYI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's like the day you sit back and say you're successful, I think is the day when you're in danger of losing it all. I think sure. you've got to, to have that drive every day to succeed is, is, is absolutely crucial to a successful story. When you win a Michelin star, people think you've got it for life. You don't. You win it. You have to win it back every year. Do you? Uh, and that's a big burden because people would deem it not good anymore. When Mr. Michelin comes in, do you know who he is? Is he like a mystery diner? He's like white, he's round, he's got loads of humps. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that, there's all these mysteries what go around. Do you know what, Jim, I've got to be honest, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I gave up on all that years ago. Okay. For me, if a restaurant is worthy of a star, it will win it anyway. Sure. What I work on is making sure that every single customer who comes through that door gets the same experience mm -hmm. of what I think that restaurant should deliver. Yeah. You know, you got off a flight, what, a few hours ago, and you go back to Australia in a few days, yeah. where you're running a restaurant, and then you're back. Dubai. And Dubai, then Dubai, of course, right. So with all that traveling, what are the three things that you can't leave the country without? A good bottle of Tabasco for that bad airplane food. Uh, obviously my chef's jacket. Okay. And my wife. Of she course. travels everywhere. Does she everywhere with you? That's really nice. It's more about, you know, experiencing our journey together, really. Yeah. Okay, this is Jelly Deal, right? Mm-hmm. It's a take on it. Let's give it a go. That's really good. I love the way you sound so surprised. Yeah, I was not expecting Eel to be like that. It's quite interesting, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what would you say is one of your most defining moments as a chef? When you're in your early years, you do a lot of manoeuvring. Yeah. So you'll spend a year with this chef, learn his repertoire, go and spend two years with that chef, learn his repertoire. I got to a point in where I was complete burnt out. I even thought sure. about giving up being a cook. Really? And then I heard about a, a chef in Spain called Fran Azia at a, a restaurant called El Bui. And it was one of those things where I just took a gamble. I got on a, a plane, got to Barcelona, got to Rosas. Um, it was early March, so everything was shut. So I slept on the beach with my rucksack and I went to work for this famous freestyle chef for free, for no money, because wow. he, he wouldn't employ me because I didn't speak Catalan, and said to Fran, look, you know, I literally will do anything. I'll wash the pans, I'll do anything. I just need to spend a year here. You're like the Jason Bourne of chefery. You just kind of go off grid, live on the <laughs> beach for a while. This is the dessert we did. Right. It's an exact replica of what we served in 98 at El Bui. Get a bit of mango, a bit of everything, and then... Ooh. Okay. That's amazing. It's pretty cool, right? That's amazing. What do you do when you actually have time? When I lived in Dubai for, for Gordon Ramsay, I, I ran his restaurant there for four years. I, it was my 30th birthday. Decided to learn to play golf. Sure. Uh, completely got engrossed in it, loved it. But all chefs at a certain level get pretty obsessive about stuff, so I got obsessed by it. I think you need to, though. If you're a chef, you kind of, I guess, automatically got a slightly obsessive personality, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. So, Jim, you know, you're one of the masters of social media in our present day time. What, right. what advice would you give to me? I'm, I'm a middle-aged chef. Oh, that's really tough. I think, for me, my social media is kind of my inner monologue. So whatever I'm thinking comes out. As long as you have clean thoughts, it's kind of, it's all right. <laughs> Don't ever think it. Good advice. What a great lunch. Thank you so much for having me into your restaurant. It's been uh, delicious and also very interesting, so thank you. Jim, my pleasure.